which goes down every Friday at 10 and 2200 UTC right here on VOA1 with yours truly, Nikki Strong. Join me. Welcome to Learning English on the Voice of America. I'm Katie Weaver. Our 30-minute program is designed for people learning English. We speak slowly using a simple style and limited vocabulary. Today on the show, we hear the American story, The Californian's Tale, by Mark Twain. Jill Robbins brings us Ask a Teacher. But first, here's a report from Brian Lynn. Airline companies say COVID-19 vaccines may become a requirement for international travelers. The requirement could help air carriers increase international travel after worldwide slowdowns caused by the coronavirus crisis. Promising news about vaccine development has given airlines and nations hope that they may soon be able to restart suspended flights. But some countries, especially in Asia and the Pacific, do not want their hard-fought gains against the virus to disappear. Alan Joyce is head of Australia's largest airline, Qantas. He said that once a COVID-19 vaccine is widely available, his carrier will likely require passengers to use it before they leave or land in Australia. Joyce said he has been talking to officials at other airlines around the world about the possibility of creating a vaccination passport for international travelers. We are looking at changing our terms and conditions to say for international travelers that we will ask people to have the vaccination before they get on the aircraft, Joyce told Australia's Network 9 television. He said they were looking at ways to electronically confirm that people have the necessary vaccine for their planned destination. South Korea's largest airline has a similar message. Korean Air spokeswoman Jill Chung says there is a real possibility that airlines will require that passengers be vaccinated. She said that is because governments are likely to require vaccinations as a condition for lifting quarantine rules for new arrivals. While Korean Air is reviewing several possibilities, Chung said any change by the company or other airlines should be a cooperative effort with governments. This is not something for airlines to independently decide, she said. A statement from Air New Zealand agreed it is up to governments to decide when and how it is safe to reopen borders. The airline said it was continuing to work closely with government officials on the issue. Australia South Korea and New Zealand have all been able to successfully limit the spread of the virus. A big part of their containment efforts have centered on keeping infected people out. Australia has enforced some of the most severe border restrictions in the world since the pandemic began. It has closed its borders to most international visitors and permitted its own citizens to travel internationally 
only in special cases. New Zealand has also closed its borders, while South Korea has required a two-week quarantine on all arriving passengers. Australia, with 26 million people, has reported about 900 deaths since the pandemic began, fewer than many nations its size. South Korea, with 51 million people, has reported a little over 500 deaths. And New Zealand, a nation of 5 million people, has reported just 25 deaths. I'm Brian Lynn. Jose Feliciano is celebrating the 50th anniversary of his beloved Christmas song, Feliz Navidad, by releasing a new version. The song is still sung in English and Spanish, but many popular artists appear in the new version, including Jason Mraz, Lynn manuel Miranda, and Shaggy. Pop musician Michael Bolton, Latin boy band CNCO, country band Big and Rich, and Mexican singer and actress Patricia Manterola are also among the 30 acts who teamed to create the new Feliz Navidad. All the artists recorded their parts separately to stay socially distant. Amazon Music released the final creation. The many artists from different backgrounds and musical genres is in keeping with Feliciano's goals for the song, past and present. The idea of Feliz Navidad was to try and unite the people, the award-winning artist said. My thought when I wrote the song was that it didn't matter what language you were singing in. The feeling of Christmas is privy to all of us. The song has only 20 words in all, six in Spanish and 14 in English. The 75-year-old Feliciano says that back in 1970, he never imagined it would become a holiday hit. I would have to say it fulfills a dream, he said in an interview over Zoom from his home in Connecticut. I had the dream in my mind, but that's as far as it went until I wrote Feliz Navidad. Feliciano has been celebrating the 50-year anniversary on social media by posting old pictures and stories. The song has appeared on Billboard magazine's Hot 100 list repeatedly over the years. It became one of the most played and recorded Christmas songs around the world. The song was part of his 1970 self-titled holiday album, later renamed Feliz Navidad. He said he wanted to do a song that, in his words, really told the story of the Savior's birth in a way that was musical and people could get behind it. The 75-year-old Puerto Rican singer-songwriter has been blind since birth. A documentary film about Feliciano's life is expected to be released next year. Behind This Guitar tells about his path from poverty in Puerto Rico and New York to performing at the Vatican's Christmas celebration. Feliciano said he dealt with difficult conditions in his life. 
I came from a foreign land. I had no vision, or at least I thought I didn't, until I found out that I did have a vision and that I saw things the way they should be seen. Feliciano will hold a December 20th show featuring Feliz Navidad and other Christmas songs live-streamed from his home. Today, we answer a question from Adriana in Uruguay. Hi, I would like to know tips on how to choose affirmative or negative sentences while using nothing, no one, or nobody, or anything, anyone, or anybody. I sometimes make mistakes with this issue, and thus the sentence can be confusing for the listener. Would you mind clarifying it? Thank you. Dear Adriana, thank you for writing to us. There is a general standard English grammar rule in that you can only have one negative in a sentence. However, local speech around the country does not always observe that rule. With that in mind, we see that anything is a word English speakers use to express a thing of any kind, in a question or a negative statement. Here are examples of both. Do they have anything to eat? They do not have anything to eat. Remember, the negative statement can only have one negative, and here it is the word not. This works the same way with the other words you asked about, anyone and anybody. For example, Has anyone come to pick up the mail today? I have not seen anyone this morning. The negative answer uses not and anyone. You can also add never to make a negative statement, as in, They never found anybody to do that job. Now, let us look at the negative forms. Nothing nobody, and no one. We use these to talk about an absence or lack of a thing or a person. The verb form that appears with these words is always singular, because you cannot have more than one of nothing. Starting with nothing, you can apply our rule again to create a statement with only one negative. Here is how we can use anything and nothing together. Is anything happening at your school today? There is nothing happening at school. Today is a holiday. We can use nobody in the same way, in answer to a question that uses anybody. Did anybody help you write the letter? Nobody helped me. I did it all by myself. Here are two simple rules. 1. Use anything and other words with any in questions and statements that include not or no. 2. Use nothing and the like in statements where there is no other negative word. I hope that helps to answer your question, Adriana. And that's Ask a Teacher. What question do you have about American English? Send us an email at learningenglish at voanews.com. I'm Jill Robbins. Are you at risk of getting seriously ill from the new coronavirus? Here are some things to keep in mind. 80% of coronavirus cases are mild. Young and healthy people are at low risk. Other people and those with serious health conditions have a greater risk of serious illness or even death. If you have a cough, fever, and difficulty breathing, contact a doctor and stay away from other people. For more information, 
visit the World Health Organization website at www.who.int or the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention at www.cdc.gov. Now, the weekly program, American Stories. Our story today is called The Californian's Tale. It was written by Mark Twain. Here is Shep O'Neill with the story. When I was young, I went looking for gold in California. I never found enough to make me rich, but I did discover a beautiful part of the country. It was called the Stanislaus. The Stanislaus was like heaven on earth. It had bright green hills and deep forests where soft winds touched the trees. Other men, also looking for gold, had reached the Stanislaw Hills of California many years before I did. They had built a town in the valley with sidewalks and stores, banks and schools. They had also built pretty little houses for their families. At first, they found a lot of gold in the Stanislaw Hills, but their good luck did not last. After a few years, the gold disappeared. By the time I reached the Stanislaw, all the people were gone too. Grass now grew in the streets, and the little houses were covered by wild rose bushes. Only the sound of insects filled the air as I walked through the empty town that summer day so long ago. Then I realized I was not alone after all. A man was smiling at me as he stood in front of one of the little houses. This house was not covered by wild rose bushes. A nice little garden in front of the house was full of blue and yellow flowers. White curtains hung from the windows and floated in the soft summer wind. Still smiling, the man opened the door of his house and motioned to me. I went inside and could not believe my eyes. I had been living for weeks in rough mining camps with other gold miners. We slept on the hard ground, ate canned beans from cold metal plates, and spent our days in the difficult search for gold. Here in this little house, my spirit seemed to come to life again. I saw a bright rug on the shining wooden floor. Pictures hung all around the room, and on little tables there were seashells, books, and china vases full of flowers. A woman had made this house into a home. The pleasure I felt in my heart must have shone on my face. The man read my thoughts. Yes, he smiled, it is all her work. Everything in this room has felt the touch of her hand. One of the pictures on the wall was not hanging straight. He noticed it and went to fix it. He stepped back several times to make sure the picture was really straight. Then he gave it a gentle touch with his hand. She always does that, he explained to me. It is like the finishing pat a mother gives her child's hair after she has brushed it. I have seen her fix all these things so often that I can do it just the way she does. I don't know why I do it. 
I'll just do it. As he talked, I realized there was something in this room that he wanted me to discover. I looked around. When my eyes reached a corner of the room near the fireplace, he broke into a happy laugh and rubbed his hands together. That's it, he cried out. You have found it. I knew you would. It is her picture. I went to a little black shelf that held a small picture of the most beautiful woman I had ever seen. There was a sweetness and softness in the woman's expression that I had never seen before. The man took the picture from my hands and stared at it. She was nineteen on her last birthday. That was the day we were married. When you see her, oh, just wait until you meet her. Where is she now? I asked. Oh, she is away, the man sighed, putting the picture back on the little black shelf. She went to visit her parents. They live forty or fifty miles from here. She has been gone two weeks today. When will she be back? I asked. Well, this is Wednesday, he said slowly. She will be back on Saturday, in the evening. I felt a sharp sense of regret. I am sorry, because I will be gone by then, I said. Gone? No, why should you go? Don't go. She will be so sorry. You see, she likes to have people come and stay with us. No, I really must leave, I said firmly. He picked up her picture and held it before my eyes. Here, he said. Now you tell her to her face that you could have stayed to meet her and you would not. Something made me change my mind as I looked at the picture for a second time. I decided to stay. The man told me his name was Henry. That night, Henry and I talked about many different things, but mainly about her. The next day passed quietly. Thursday evening, we had a visitor. He was a big, gray-haired miner named Tom. I just came for a few minutes to ask when she's coming home, he explained. Is there any news? Oh, yes, the man replied. I got a letter. Would you like to hear it? He took a yellowed letter out of his shirt pocket and read it to us. It was full of loving messages to him and to other people, their close friends and neighbors. When the man finished reading it, he looked at his friend. Oh, no, you are doing it again, Tom. You always cry when I read a letter from her. I'm going to tell her this time. No, you must not do that, Henry, the gray-haired miner said. I am getting old, and any little sorrow makes me cry. I really was hoping she would be here tonight. The next day, Friday, another old miner came to visit. He asked to hear the letter. The message in it made him cry, too. We all miss her so much, he said. Saturday finally came. I found I was looking at my watch very often. Henry noticed this. You don't think something has happened to her, do you? he asked me. I smiled and said that I was sure 
she was just fine. But he did not seem satisfied. I was glad to see his two friends, Tom and Joe, coming down the road as the sun began to set. The old miners were carrying guitars. They also brought flowers and a bottle of whiskey. They put the flowers in vases and began to play some fast and lively songs on their guitars. Henry's friends kept giving him glasses of whiskey, which they made him drink. When I reached for one of the two glasses left on the table, Tom stopped my arm. Drop that glass and take the other one, he whispered. He gave the remaining glass of whiskey to Henry just as the clock began to strike midnight. Henry emptied the glass. His face grew whiter and whiter. Boys, he said, I am feeling sick. I want to lie down. Henry was asleep almost before the words were out of his mouth. In a moment, his two friends had picked him up and carried him into the bedroom. They closed the door and came back. They seemed to be getting ready to leave, so I said, Please don't go, gentlemen. She will not know me. I am a stranger to her. They looked at each other. His wife has been dead for 19 years, Tom said. Dead? I whispered. Dead or worse, he said. She went to see her parents about six months after she got married. On her way back, on a Saturday evening in June, when she was almost here, the Indians captured her. No one ever saw her again. Henry lost his mind. He thinks she is still alive. When June comes, he thinks she has gone on her trip to see her parents. Then he begins to wait for her to come back. He gets out that old letter, and we come around to visit so he can read it to us. On the Saturday night, she is supposed to come home. We come here to be with him. We put a sleeping drug in his drink so he will sleep through the night. Then he is all right for another year. Joe picked up his hat and his guitar. We have done this every June for 19 years, he said. The first year there were 27 of us. Now just the two of us are left. He opened the door of the pretty little house, and the two old men disappeared into the darkness of the Stanislaw. <laughs> You have just heard the story, The Californian's Tale. It was written by Mark Twain. Your storyteller was Shep O'Neill. This is Shirley Griffith. And that's our show. But we'll be back tomorrow, same time, same place, with another Learning English program on The Voice of America. Thanks for joining us. I'm Katie Weaver. Mm-hmm.